Hey guys, this is Whitney, and welcome back to an episode of Spastic Chatter. Spastic Chatter is a platform meant to feature those in the seropolitic community, and I get together weekly with individuals with CP, like myself, to have a kind of uncensored chat, if you will, about what it's like living with this type of disability. And for this week, I am very excited to have Todd. Lawyer, law, lawyer. I'm gonna. I, I, I can't pronounce your last name, but Todd, and he is, and he has a very um uh, cool story. He's in um uh, into ministry, and I came across his story from my good uh, buddy, old Aaron Watson. Uh, and I thought he, I thought Todd was a pretty cool. Guy, and I wanted to reach out and have most plastic chatter, so here he is. And I'm gonna let Todd introduce himself, and then we'll get on to the conversation. Hey, I am Todd, and I'm super stoked to be on the show with you. I'm very honored, and um, uh, I I love your vision for your show. So thank you so much for having me. Awesome. So um so I'm just gonna we're just gonna dive right into what uh let me let me take you let me take let me take it from the very beginning. How how was your uh how would you describe your childhood growing up with a disability and did that impact uh your fu- your future in like your future in ministry or anything like that? Yeah. Wow. As m- my book um weak is the new strong talks of uh, um, um, when I, uh, I was born, I almost died. <laughs> I, um, um, so m- my life could have been very, very short, but my mom prayed, God, may you let time live. And if he does, may, may he be in full-time ministry for you. And, and so well, why I'm here, I'm alive, and fast forward, after I got my bachelor's in business, it was not on my heart yet to be in full-time ministry, but I um, felt committed that I was supposed to be. And then I called my mom, I told her, and that was the very first time in my life that she ever told me that story that I just shared with you. That's awesome. And I want to, I want to, uh, just add that this, this is, this is a uh, chatter is all about diversity, and this is Todd's perspective, and uh, it, I, that kind of brings me to another, to another question that I wanted to ask you, is, cause like, here's a here's a backstory, here's a backstory for me. In college, I got, I was, I was involved with. With um, the ministry Chi Alpha, and yeah, well, what school? What uh, school? Stephen F. Stephen F. Austin State University. Uh, oh yeah, I have a lot of friends who went there. That's a, a, a big party school. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> Yeah, kind of. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but that really opened, being a part of uh, Kyle Fett 
really opened my eyes to a to a different to a ministry, but it all it opened my eyes to a different perspective of disability and religion. And I kind of wanted to get your perspective on your thoughts on disability and religion because I've seen it from both ends of the spectrum, like where they see where they see disability as like a bad thing. And then like they see it and then like I thought people like like praise my disability, if that makes sense. Uh, oh yes, um, it, it makes perfect sense. And we have to de distinguish religion from having faith. Yeah. So, um, like, how how do you do you do you when you're when you're when you're out when you're out, when you're out and about doing your thing? Do you do you have do you think people like? Do they see your disability? Do they see you and like view you any different? Okay, well, I'm about to shock you a little bit because if it weren't for faith, I would not have had the revelation that I'm thankful for my cerebral palsy because God's power is displayed through weakness and, and this is why I, I wrote my book, Weak is the New Strong, uh, about how to live not in spite of your, uh, of your weakness, but to live by strength because of your weakness. But let me talk about, um, let me talk about, since you brought that up, I have a whole chapter about the negative experience that I faced in the ch church. And let's re remember the church is made up of imperfect, sinful yeah. people uh, um, saved by g God's grace. But to answer you very shortly, and you can expound if you want to, but I have faced more discrimination inside the church because of my disability than I ever faced in the world outside of the ch church, yes. as shocking as that might be. Yes, I, like I love, I love how, I love how you said that like the strongest new is the new week and that how your faith brought your like acceptance or cerebral palsy out because like that was like uh, i'll give a i'll give a i'll give a i'll give a backstory on my time at kyle and like yeah. like 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 you were saying um, like at sfa like like my home my my home group or whatever um you want to say you want to call them? They were very accepting of my disability. They they didn't make make it. A, they didn't make it a huge deal. But the minute that I went to a national conference, like I was, I was like, it was seen as like a negative thing. And I would have people come up to me and like, like, like try to like grab me out of my seat. I like wanted me to walk, and they're like. And like, I like, oh, uh, I would just try to have uh, this is, this is like kind of a joke, but they're like, if you believed in God enough, you can mock. And I was like, I, was like, I believe in God, but I also believe in gravity. And right yes. now, yes, <laughs> yeah, gravity, <laughs> gravity, <laughs> 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 so like, like I, and then I had to like, I had to like go to my, I had to like go to my, uh, my pa my pastor for SFA or what I would call him, and he had to like he had he had to reassure me that when he it's okay, it's okay. People just think the people just think differently. Like we're all like we're all human. We just have our own. We just have we just think we just think um 
he just has a different perspective when it comes to religion and disability and all that thing. So, yeah. Uh, uh -huh. I am so happy that you brought this uh, up because it's so unchristlike what happened with you in that experience. And hey, I have experienced the same thing. But let me help help the listeners know that 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 right there is an example from the legalistic side of the Pentecostal movement. So it's a very small sect of the larger um, big C church, and they wrongly believe that. Okay, so don't, don't, don't get me wrong. I do think that God can heal you and me right now if he won't, won't want to. Like, that's, I mean, he's yeah. that powerful. But it's wrong to say, um, um, it, it, it's not biblical. It, it's not, not Christianity to, to say, that if you only have enough faith, God will heal you. There's a lot of other factors involved. And you want to say that God heals, but it's not Christ-like. It's not loving for, for how people in small town religious boxes came up to me and said, Hey, Todd, God wants to heal you. If you have enough faith, you can walk. That's just not biblical. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean you, yes, God heals. Yes, God uses faith to heal. But to put that kind of legal legalism on God's timing and uh, on what he considers healing, that's just not right. Yeah, so I wanted, I, w I wanted to bring that up to, to like kind of show, <clears throat> kind of show, kind of show a different, per different perspective on, on things and disability in general. And um, so what, what do you, what do you like to do? What do you like to do in your spare time? Todd, when you're not when you're not when you're not out there in the ministry, what are you what are you what are you <coughs> doing? Well, I enjoy hanging out with my family. I have a, a a beautiful, sweet wife named Marissa, and we we and we have three beautiful. Children, uh, um, my uh, my five year old is named uh, Oliver, and my two year old is named Hallie, and we have a three month old named Henry. So I, I like to just uh, hang out with them and to explore. Yeah, that's very that's very cool. Like that brings up a, that brings up a whole new topic. It's disability and, and parenting, and like how um yeah like like in society people see uh people see us as, as like as like not being able to be parents, and here you are like a dad of three is like like it's just like it's just like a normal thing. So. So are you? Yeah, yeah. It's so interesting because my son, uh, Oliver, he literally thinks that I am the strongest man that <laughs> that he's ever seen. It's like here, here I am in wheelchair, shrivel, poverty, speech but but he c compares everyone to how tall I am, to how 
strong I am. Like, of course. It's, it's, it's so interesting to see him want to, he, he wants to aspire to be as strong as me. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Like, I, I, I hear, like, hear some funny, some funny moments from, I have, I have, um, I have five nieces, or six nieces and nephews. Uh, five, uh, five or six, uh, uh, and, and they, like, for instance, my, my niece, like, her class, like, saw, she was, she was at school, and she saw somebody, they saw somebody in a wheelchair, and, like, her class is, like, freaking, like, freaking out, like, look at that girl in the wheelchair, and with Josie turned around, and she, like, told her, she, like, shook her head in class, and she said, guys, it's just a wheelchair, like, it's, <laughs> like that's her normal. Like she doesn't, she doesn't know any, she doesn't know any different. So she like, told yeah. her, guys, yeah. that's the wheelchair. Uh, uh, I bet then she likes to get in her lap and roll around, huh? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they, they love. Okay, it's so funny because sometimes uh, children are. Uh, I'm afraid of my, my, my wheelchair until they warm up to me and then they will not get off my lap. <laughs> <laughs> it's yes. not, not like the best carnival ride, right? <laughs> exactly. I don't know about you, but I'm in a, I'm in a power wheelchair, so like, so like, it's even more fun to them, and like I have, I have a horn, so I got I'll, I'll honk the horn once, so like to like win them over, and then by the by the end, by the end of the conversation, like that's all you hear is the horn going like "Come on, Tony!" because they want to they want to honk the horn like like the whole time was talking. Yeah, it's so cool how everyone can give people. A different, wonderful experience, and so we can give ch children that experience that people who are not differently abled cannot do. That yeah, you know? yeah. And <laughs> one of the topics that I've talked about recently is um, it seems like inclusion has like taken. I just uh, like positive, positive steps forward in society, and like and like I always like we talked. I talked about recently in an episode how parents shouldn't hush their kids when they see a person with a disability. They, to me, in my perspective, they should like encourage them to come talk to us and like ask, yeah. our, ask our name and like show that we're show that we're just like they are, like they were were approachable. Yes, I, I am with you, and to add to that, children should not be shamed for their curiosity, because every child is curious, right? And that's how we learn, and, and so... We are really big about gentle parenting, and, and, and we never want to shame. As a dad, I never want to shame my kids for simply being curious. <laughs> yeah, that's a good. That's a good. That's a good way to put it. That you never want. You never want to shame your kid for being curious. Because when you when you do that, they're gonna they're gonna be like closed off. They're not gonna want. They're not gonna want to. They're not gonna want to like go up to people and talk and expand their expand their horizons. So, uh, so I'm gonna change the topic on you. So yeah. you you were a you're a best selling best selling author for your book. Do you wanna do you wanna talk about your book a little bit? Oh, Sure. So, um, before my 
twenties, yeah, I really um struggled with my um disability. It was a, a source of insecurity, but um something happened when I was twenty six and that changed my, my whole life. And and I ha had the revelation that my cerebral palsy and every other weakness that I have that people who, who are not differently able has, that's not a source of insecurity anymore. In fact, our deepest weaknesses are our greatest st st strength. So I wrote Wick is the New Strong to help people. Um, um, people are making a mistake that it's a memoir of my life, but it's not. I'm, a, I'm not a. I, I'm not a celebrity, right? So that book will never sell. But it's a book that I do use personal stories and it will help you know how your weaknesses are your greatest strengths. And like you said, um, 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 it became an Amazon best seller. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm gonna leave the I'm gonna leave the link to the description to the to your to your book in the description below that because that, that's really cool. Um and I, I again I love how you say that your weaknesses are your best strength because and I kinda I can kinda resonate with your story because the whole reason like behind the name spastic chatter is because you can clearly see that I'm spastic when I talk and that was my voice and the way I talk well is like my biggest my biggest insecurity so I wanted to like re I wanted to reclaim it in a sense so I'm I'm calling myself out before anybody can do it before anybody can do it to me, if that makes sense. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, uh, I, I think that you, you, your name of your podcast, one, that's a really cool name. Well, because everyone is, is spastic. <laughs> In a way. And number two, that, 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 is doing what what you said that, that my book is about the best redeeming spasticity as your strength and i yeah. do see how that's a, a huge strength too yeah and like i mentioned this before but like like I had confided in like one of my, one of my professors that has a disability that like I don't like the way it was before I got on stage to do a TED talk and I was like I really don't like I don't want to seem more disabled than I am and he had to like sit me down and he was like Whitney you can't change the way you talk so you might as well embrace it like there's no changing your cerebral palsy so you might as well embrace it so. Yes. Uh, that's a whole journey. That's a whole journey in it and it's self and it kinda it it kinda I, I, that's why you're I get how you talk about embracing your weaknesses and strengths like it that really resonates with me. So Ooh, well, I do work in um I, I am based in Hollywood would right so i meet as a special life coach with actors directors producers that you have watched probably their 
TV shows or their movies. And what, what's so interesting is Hollywood paints this, this false, perfect picture of someone who is strong and what you're supposed to look like and, and how you're supposed to be active right but what's interesting is some of these people that I sit down with and to talk to people who 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 maybe your audience has recognized their name or seen their show. A lot of them are deeply insecure about their own weaknesses. So this is not a um, a disability thing. This is really a, a human thing. You know, like yeah. every, every single human only tries to hide their weaknesses and to put their strengths on a lamp stand. Well, one, that d does not allow anyone to really know them. And two, that does not allow them to thrive in who they really are. So this message week is, is the new strong. I really think it's for everyone. It's for yeah, exactly. it, if you are human, which if you're listening to this podcast, I'm assuming you're human. <laughs> if you're human, you are weak. And but yeah. the good news is that's that no no longer has to be the source of your deepest insecurity, but now it can both be the source of of your it is strength, and, and yeah, my book shows people how to go down that journey. That's awesome. And again, I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave a link to your book in the description. But where can are you on social media? Like, where can people follow you? Yeah, I'm on social media. The easiest way is. Uh, on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter, they can just um, put in at Todd Lawler, L O L L A R, and they can find me. And hey, uh, I love to continue the conversation, I love to meet new people. So, if you have any questions for me, please contact me. That's awesome. So, but 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 but, but something is on my heart, and um, and that is it, 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 it was on my heart to talk on this show about relationships because I. I think every human being longs for relationship and mm -hmm. deep intimate intimacy. Yeah. And so I really want to encourage the, the listener to let's be transparent, let's be open in, in our, our relationships and let's be confident about our weaknesses in these relationships too yeah that's that's very that's a very good advice and and um todd i want to thank you for being on spastic chatter uh i had a very good time talking with you and i'm gonna have to i'm gonna start following you following you on all the social media platforms this is not going to be the last time you see me uh, um and again i want to thank you um 
for, for being on an episode. And for those of you watching, if you want to be on an episode of Spastic Chatter, there's always a link in the description. Or you can comment wherever you see this video. And um, thanks again, Todd. And check back next week for another episode of Spastic Chatter. Thank you.